Okay, everybody, here we are. The long awaited fat loss, fat burner video, okay? So, we have this pandemic, people sit at home since March, in the case of this city, and, you know, people are gaining weight. So, of course, it is the American way to say what kind of pill can I take to get rid of the fat, okay? So, uh, preamble. First of all, nothing, even if you hire me, one of the best coaches you'll ever know, and if you take the kitchen sink, will make up for four months of shit eating. Okay? It's not going to happen. So I put together a list that I divided roughly into three groups of fat burners. It's by no means a comprehensive list. It's also not that I'm a doctor. I'm just a uh, bipolar bodybuilder. So if you listen to me, I can't really help in the first place. Okay? So the way I put it together is, well, let me reframe that. The way why I made this video was actually a bit of concern because... It's not exactly news that in bodybuilding um, medications get abused, you know, but it has really gotten to a point where I know of a few hospitalizations because of these drugs and, you know, not all of them ended well, okay? So hopefully I can provide some sort of clarity for some people uh, to move on to, you know, healthier panels. So the three groups that I made are basically ones that includes HGH and HGH releasing drugs two stimulants and then three obesity drugs aka drugs help with binge eating so let's start with the hgh group so basically there's a workaround so people who can't get their hands on proper human growth hormone they go with what you know substances that release growth hormone okay so people believe that intermittent fast intermittent fasting does it which is of course nonsense so Growth hormone releasing peptides, GHRP, that was what the first ones to be around. How does this work? So basically, there are a ghrelin agonists. So they work with the hormone ghrelin in the intestines and produce growth hormone. So the very first model, sort of like the T1000, the GHRP6, was is a drug that produces a large growth hormone boost, but also an insane hunger so obviously that isn't so great for losing body fat right then on the next level you have drugs like epamoraline and CJT25 uh, so interesting about these drugs is especially epamoraline it produces only growth hormone without the cortisol and the prolactin that the other uh, groups did so why is it important well if you also get a large boost of cortisol, that will make you watery, hungry, and so on and so forth. So, ipamoraline, especially if you combine it with CJ25, um, gives a strong GH boost in the body, okay? What is the hang-up? The hang-up is that all these drugs work within the ghrelin function of the body, which is the hunger hormone. So that tells you where this is going. So these drugs actually have value in a situation where you are catabolic and you have to rebuild weight. Um, but because of the hunger that comes with it and the ability to store nutrients better, they are actually not that great of a fat burner. Okay, and we get to that in a second. Then there's MK677, which is technically a SARM, like a selective androgen uh, receptor modulator, even though it doesn't quite function within the androgen receptors, but it's categorized like that. Um, that is widely available, and it's arguably one of the shittiest drugs you can ever take. So with MK677, you get about 20 to 24 pulses of growth hormone. You pull insane amounts of water, you look like a buffalo, and you're constantly hungry which again, for losing weight, is a disaster. And then on the top of that food chain is obviously pharmaceutical grade HGH, human growth hormone, which sort of is, uh, not sort of, that is a, it's a long amino acid uh, as a hormone and has this sort of Hollywood mystique in terms of fat loss, muscle gain, longevity, you know, better hair, better skin, that sort of thing. And that is true to an extent, but it's a very, very poor fat burner. So, so even if you have the money and the means on it to get HGH, 
the actual fat loss is minimal. It's not even a couple pounds. And all the other things, they are really better suited for people who want to get bigger, especially when combined with steroids because you know, you're hungrier and you can store nutrients a bit better than you could without. But anything that makes you ravenous during a diet is probably not such a good setup. I guess you can agree on that, right? So from all those things, uh, I would steer clear, to be honest. They are, so from what we know in terms of side effects, epamorelin, again, these are all drugs that really haven't been tested on humans, which also should make you think, uh, seems to be rather side effect free. But if you're taking it for quality of life or you know getting better skin, that sort of thing, it, there's probably some value to it. But again, it's not worth the risk. And it's not really worth the money. And for fat loss, it's completely overrated, in my opinion. Okay. Then we get to the drugs that cause real problems. The stimulants, you know. So the bottom, you have obviously caffeine, which is, if you ever pull caffeine out of New York City, the city would collapse. There would be nothing going on. So caffeine has a very mild fat burning effect. You're looking at like 100 to 150 calories a day. It helps with focus. It gives you, you know, the energy to go through a workout. It's somewhat hunger retardant. And in the grand scheme of things, harmless. Unless, of course, somebody decides to, you know, drink four, four locos before the workout, then you have an issue. But in general speaking, um, that's fine. Now, the drugs I want to talk about are basically uh, drugs like Adderall, uh, Vivanzi, and Fentanyl. Okay? Those are basically, not basically, those are uh, amphetamine substitutes. So they belong to the amphetamine substitute family, which basically has been around since the 30s, courtesy of the Nazis, uh, giving it to the troops. And in that group, you have MDMA, ephedrine, so you can already see you are in very good company. So Adderall, as any college kid knows, gives you the ability to study harder. Does it though? Not really. You are awake but your cognitive ability isn't really any better. So just like any stimulant, and especially amphetamine, it has mild hunger suppressing effects. There's a little bit of fat burn because you tend to move more because you're high. Um, same with Vianza, the one is just an, an amphetamine salt. So there's a slightly different mechanism, but it's really only different in terms of how long the mechanism is. The same with fentamine. Fentamine has been banned because of fenfen in most countries, but here you can still get it. Beats me. Um, so all these drugs, for the first couple of weeks, they provide somewhat of a fat burning effect, but again, it's rather minimal. And the addiction potential is sky high. And then there's liver damage, kidney damage that can occur. You know, people have hallucinations and they have sleep deprivation, all that sort of thing. So again. It's not something like anything that's related to MDMA and you know speed. You probably shouldn't consume just to lose a couple pounds, right? So, amphetamines. Honestly, I don't even think who ever thought that was a good idea. I'd say no. And then the last group is, and again, I am not a doctor. I just grouped it together. Uh, like SSRI up takers, people, so people that deal with uh, binge eating disorders, they're often being prescribed those to get to the uh, either the OCD part or the general depression part. So the brain has neurotransmitters and they're sending, being sent from one nerve to another, but sometimes they're not being taken up and then the same nerve takes them up and that's called the reuptake. And that can cause depression from what we think, okay? So I just picked a couple that some of them I have been on. Um, so there is Lexapro that people use, which is essentially um, an, a bipolar drug. The thing with Lexapro is, we actually don't know, uh, sorry, with Depakote is we don't actually know how it works. So you're taking an asset or a product asset that you don't quite understand. So that's genius, right? So might help with binge eating, but honestly, no go. Um, Lexapro actually causes weight gain. It's another drug that people take for weight loss. And then that leaves the more harmless one, which has a butrin, which is like, again, works on the SRI uptake. But here's my thing. If you are a binge eater, or you have any other, you know, relationship with food, then you must get to the bottom of this, whatever it is that ails you and make adjustments from there. You cannot just take a drug and expect that to go away, okay? So for the short term, it might stabilize you, but in the long run, you will fall back. 
So this video is very disappointing for most people I'm guessing because in the long run, all these drugs for fat loss are crap, okay? So if, 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 if you wanna go the chemical route, honestly, go on a mild roid, you know, like testosterone or anabol. So you just don't go and do you go, go catabolic, so you stay slightly anabolic, like a very minimal dosage, 200 milligrams a week or so. And ready for this? Eat less. Wow, stunning revelation, okay? Because like I said, you can take all this stuff, but if you are hunkering down at Shake Shack, Mickey D's, Domino's Pizza, none of this will matter. None of this. You're just wasting a lot of money and you're putting your body through to stuff that, you know, it doesn't need to. So go with stuff that's tried and true. Like I said, you know, get like something like testosterone, test E or whatever. Have a long ester diet. You will keep most of your muscle and you're good to go. And all the other stuff, like amphetamines, that kills people. A lot, a lot of times they get addicted. You know, it is it eats up your muscle mass. Like stay away. Uh, Lexapro, Depakote. Like I've been on Lexapro. Like one of the many fun things is, you gotta go to the bathroom every hour. So your sleep's food, whatever. Um, Wellbutrin, the antidepressant. Most people actually gain weight from it. And like I said, the, the entire HGH stuff. You wanna get bigger? Go for it. Want lose weight? Not. So, once again, it all boils down to do your effing homework. That's what it comes down to. Like all the other stuff, no matter what you're taking, no matter what you're doing, you're not gonna outdrug a shitty diet. And you can quote me on this, okay? Uh, Mike out. Hopefully it doesn't rain, otherwise, come unemployed this afternoon and speak soon.